Hello everybody, this is Dan Bigman. I am your GPR professor from LearnGPR.com and I'm coming at you today with a video about the effects of permittivity on your antenna, your GPR antenna's frequency. Okay, the effects of permittivity on your GPR antenna's frequency. And this is something that um, I got educated on the last time I was in the UK. Uh, Mike Langton, I was able to uh, uh, um, be honored enough to share a classroom with him and uh, and he had some really great things to add uh, to our, our conversations and since I'm going back to the UK I figured it was a nice time to kind of put something like this out so this is something that Mike Langdon really explained to me um, easily which was really nice and, uh, uh, and so I figure I will I will dispense his great knowledge to you so the effects of permittivity on frequency K stands for dielectric permittivity so we'll start by looking at Frequency. Okay, we're going to start by looking at frequency. Most antenna, <coughs> excuse me, that are commercially available <coughs> on the uh, GPR antenna, commercially available, have what's known as a central frequency. And the practitioner, professional, will choose an antenna frequency based on the application that they're trying to uh, um, uh, develop, right? So if they're going to do utility locating, they might choose an antenna frequency that's like 250 megahertz or 400 megahertz or something along those lines. If they're using, they're trying to find rebar in concrete, then they might be using 1000 megahertz, 1500 megahertz, 2.7 uh, uh, gigahertz or you know 2700 megahertz um, or something like that. So higher frequency. If they're trying to find depth to bedrock or sinkholes, they might be using a 50 megahertz antenna. So there's a range of applications that GPR can be used for. And every time that you pick up a GPR antenna that's a pulse radar, not all antenna are pulse radar, there are others. Check out our videos on the comparison of step frequency with pulse radar. Um, but every time you pick up a pulse radar that has a central frequency, basically this is what you get. You get um, a distribution of actual frequencies. So antennas are broadband or ultra wide band, depending on who you're talking to. Thanks again, Mike. Is um, a, a broadband or ultra wide band, and if you have a 1,000 megahertz antenna, then you're going to get some sort of distribution like this. Okay, uh, the peak might be a little bit uh, uh, narrower. Nonetheless, is you're going to get plus or minus. Okay, plus or minus. You know, maybe to 500 megahertz or to 1,500 megahertz um, if it's if it's an ultra wide band it'll be uh, higher than this and, uh, uh, and and lower than this okay so you'll get a, a greater spread as well maybe that's another video I'll do another Mike Langdon taught me video so uh, this is the kind of distribution that you would generally get and so why is it called a 1000 megahertz antenna if you're getting possibly as far down as 500 or less and as high up as 1500 or less, it's because this is what's known as the central frequency. Okay, central frequency is 1000 in this example. Now that we set all that up, what's the effect of permittivity on this distribution? Okay, what's the effect of permittivity on this distribution here? Well, what Mike was able to articulate to me and to the class was that there is a downshift in frequency as there's an increase in permittivity. So there's a downshift in frequency as there's an increase in permittivity. What does that mean? Well, let's say that it's a 1000 megahertz antenna and it's you know moving through a, um, a, a, a K of nine, okay? Which is kind of pretty typical for dry to moist soils. Um, and now, you know, you get into wet clay and you have instead let's say 16 plus that's an increase in the permittivity okay increase in permittivity what's the effect that this has on your distribution well here's what happens this downshift looks like this now you have this central frequency shifted to a lower frequency Okay, the central frequency is shifted to a lower frequency. And so it's no longer 1,000 as the central frequency. It's something that's less than 1,000. So what would the effects be 
of this downshift in frequency. Same antenna, okay? Same antenna, the waves moving through. And this can happen, for example, in the same soils with depth, okay? So now you go from um, reasonably dry and moist soils to, uh, uh, to saturated soils. Um, and so there's an increased amount of water and there's a, a higher permittivity. And if you don't know what I'm talking about, then hop over to learngpr.com, put your name and email address in and, and you'll get our, our free uh, introductory video. And it goes over permittivity and what that is. So, so this downshift in permittivity now has some effects on your results or your responses. Namely, here's what happens. This downshift will cause uh, an increase in wavelength, okay? So that's an increase in wavelength. That means your wavelength will be longer. And a decrease in resolution, okay? A decrease in resolution. So your wavelength will increase, but your resolution will decrease. So the more moist the conditions are, the greater the shift could potentially be, and the worse your signal's resolution is going to be. And by resolution, we mean the size of things that you can uh, uh, record, um, definition between two things that are near each other, your ability to be able to record those. That all goes down as your wavelength goes up, and your wavelength goes up as permittivity goes down, because as permittivity goes down, your frequency goes down. So, uh, uh, that's the effects that permittivity has on frequency. There are other effects. I don't want to get too deep into the complexities of it because most people won't have to deal with it on site. Usually, um, they're negligible effects, but you know, depend and, 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 and folks, I don't want to inundate you with so much. I mean, for example, there is, um, uh, velocity is frequency dependent as well, slightly. And so there are other effects that happen when permittivity goes up and frequency goes down. So I hope this was helpful. If you didn't know that higher permittivities uh, occurred in, uh, uh, or affected lower lower frequencies, a downshift in frequency, then uh, pop in the comments below. That's something new for you that you didn't know. And um, uh, uh, um, tell me what kind of uh, systems you use. Put those in the comments below. Let's get a discussion going on this. So hope this was helpful. Again, pop over to learngpr.com. Put your name and email address in. If you found this was helpful, um, then we will send you videos like this every single week if you put your email address in. Share this with a friend, a colleague, a, a classmate that you think might benefit from this. And um, I wish you nothing but the best. So good luck.